Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Johnny, Les Walters at World Mutual. Les, how are you? Uh, I'm ready to blow a gasket. Why? What's the matter? Trouble. Three hundred thousand dollars worth. It's a lot of trouble. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll pick you up at your place in, say, uh, 20 minutes. All right, but what's it all about? Less murder, burglary, arson, embezzlement? Uh, I tell you when I see you. Well, give me a hint at least, some possible angle to mull over. All you have to mull over is what your commission may be on 300 Gs. Okay, I don't mind if I do. Yeah, uh, if you can solve this one. Uh, see you. I'll be there. <laughs> CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to World Mutual Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of... The Deadly Crystal Matter. By the time I'd shaved, showered, dressed, and poured myself a cup of coffee, Les Walters was pounding on my door. Coming, Les, coming. And the top of the morning to you. Well, you have to sound so all fired cheerful. <laughs> oh, why not? Come on in, join me a cup of coffee. No, 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 no time. Not if you're going to make the next plane to New York. Oh, I am. You are. Why? I told you. $300,000 the company doesn't want to have to pay out. For what? Look, will you quit stalling? Let's go. came back from New York? Yes, yes. Or rather, uh, Bronxville, one of the suburbs. Yes, I know the town. Well, that's where Mrs. Gurney Dalrymple Weatherwell lives. And who is she? Oh, an eccentric old character, if ever was. Lives at 1263 Birch Brook Road. You got it? 1263 Birch Brook Road. I got it. Now, tell me, what's happened? Ah, the old, old caper. Servants day off, the old lady all alone. With... 300,000 worth of jewels. You mean she kept that kind of stuff around the house? <laughs> she kept it on her. On her? Yeah. 24 hours a day, even when she went to bed. To remind her of the old days when she didn't have a cent, she says. I told you she's a character. Boy, she must be. Yeah, well, the only time she didn't wear it was when she took a bath. So, what happened? She took a bath. <laughs> you may think you're kidding, but that's it. She left the stuff on a dressing table in her bedroom. By the time she got out of the tub, threw on a dressing gown, walked back into the bedroom, the stuff was gone. And absolutely no sign of where and how and by whom. Mm. The police have any idea? Oh, no, she won't let them near the place. Why not? Look, I told you, Johnny, she's, she's a, a character. character. All right. Yes, she's a character. She, she wouldn't even give me any details beyond what I told you. Insisted that you and you alone handle the case. Well, go yeah. ahead. Now, here, here's a... List of everything. Watch it, watch it, Lamb. It's close. Crazy woman driver. Yeah, quite a doll, though. Almost yeah, be a pleasure to be run down yeah, by. Yeah, sure. Well, not me. <laughs> Anyhow, let's see. Here, here's the list. Now, the most valuable piece is that number one item there, a necklace with a big ruby pendant. You see it there? Wow. 23 carats. 23. I wouldn't let that out of my sight even when I took a shower. Yeah. Now, when did it happen, Les? Uh, you shouldn't have asked. Hmm? Two weeks ago today. What? Yeah. And she only just now notified you? Yeah, yeah. And she won't let the police take a hand, huh? No, I told you, John. Yes, you told me, Les, but if you ask me, there's something very, very fishy about all this. Item one, 1045, plane fare to New York. And aboard the plane, in the seat right next to me, yes, the girl who had nearly run us down on the way to the airport. She was late 20s, I'd say, very petite and cute, with jet black hair and warm brown eyes. Vaguely familiar, too, but not exactly sociable. I told you, Mr. Mr. What'd you say your name is? Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes. And yours? Lynn Peters, if it makes any difference. Well, of course it does, because Lynn... Is... Look, I, I told you, Johnny, it was completely the fault of whoever was driving your car. And that's that. Now, excuse me. I'll tell you what, Lynn, I'll have him send you a written apology, okay? It won't be necessary. Forget it. 
Now, if you'll excuse me. Forget that somebody as pretty as you are might have been hurt because of his... I said excuse me. I'd like to read, if you don't mind. Ouch. And that was the end of that conversation. Item two in New York, $50 deposit on a rental car. An hour later, I pulled up in front of the old mansion at 1263 Birch Brook Road in the beautiful suburb of Bronxville. And Mrs. Gurney Dalrymple Weatherwell was a character. Mr. Walter told you rightly, Mr. Dollar. Like today, it was the servant's day off. I was completely alone here. And it was while I was taking my tub that my priceless jewelry was stolen. And uh, no sign of anyone having broken in, Mrs. Weatherwell? None whatsoever. I see. Now, tell me, who else has a key to the house beside the servants? No one, and it was not they who did it. Well, can you be sure of that? Absolutely certain. I won't even permit your questioning them about it. Any family, then? And well, since my husband died, I've lived here entirely alone. Except for the servants. It was not they. You didn't really answer my question about family. There's someone at the door, Mr. Dollar. Yes, I know, but before you... You may answer, answer it. What? I told you no servants today, so you will answer the door. Go on, young man, go on. All right, all right. Here, Charlie says... He... Lynn. Uh, here, would you, would you take this Blanc Oh, well, Wait a minute, Lynn. Who's Lynn? You are, at least that's the name. Well, what you... is it? What is it, young man? What is... What's that package you have there? Is that for me? Yes, yes, it is, here. Well, then, please shut that door. Well, now, just a minute, I, I think... If this is what... I think it is. Now, wait a minute. The girl out there who brought it, would you just stand aside one moment, Don't please? bother, Mr. Dollar. You see? There they are, my jewels. What? Yeah, that's right, all of them. I knew Charles wouldn't say. Now, wait a minute. Listen to me, that girl. The only thing I'm interested in is that my jewels are back. There. See, aren't they lovely? Yes, they're lovely, but if you'll let me by, please, so I can see what happened Here. to her. Here, while I hold it in place, you may close the catch on this necklace for me. Go on, fix it. Uh, okay, okay. There you are. Kill. You may go now. Thank you, now that she's gone. I have my jewels back, the case is closed, and I have no further need of you. Goodbye. The case is closed, hmm? Yes. Lady, that's what you think. <laughs> I told Les I thought there was something fishy about this case. Now I was sure of it. I was also sure there was no point trying to get anywhere with Mrs. Weatherwell. So, there wasn't much to go on, except the girl, Lynn Peters, if that really was her name. And there had been something vaguely familiar about her, but from where? I drove back to New York to 18th Precinct Police Headquarters with my old pal, Lieutenant Randy Singer. Lynn Peters. No, no, it doesn't ring a bell with me, Johnny. What have you got on it? Accessory to a jewelry heist up in Bronxville, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, what does the police think up there? Randy, they don't even know the stuff was taken. They don't? Mm -mm. And now that it's all been returned... Returned? By who? This girl, this Lynn Peters. But if the stuff is back, why worry about it? I want to know why it was brought back. And if it was intended to be returned, why it was stolen in the first place. So, the answer is to find the girl. Well, I wish I could help you, Johnny, but I never even heard of her. So how's about forgetting her and treating me to a nice dinner on that expense account of yours, huh? Randy, how about a look at your mug book, hmm? Brooke, we've got a stack of them this high, Johnny. It'll take you two weeks. Just lead me to them. But you're not even sure she's from here in New York. Randy, listen to me. More than any other city in the world, this town puts a kind of stamp on its people. Not just the way they talk, though New Yorkers do have a kind of a dialect all their own, but there's more than that. It's the way they walk, the way they dress. The way a girl uses makeup, the way she reacts when you try to make a pass at her. Oh, now I get it. Your real reason for wanting to find this dame... Oh, place... come on now, stop. The fact remains that if somebody asked me, I'd say right off that she's a New Yorker. So let me see the mug books. But even if she is a local, she wouldn't be in one of them unless she's been on the plotter. And from what little you seem to know about her, from only the fact she happened to return some stolen goods without even a charge against her on this particular job, and with only your suspicion that she might be involved. Okay, Johnny, just follow me. Ten hours and 15 minutes later, it was 4 a.m., and I was still poring over the mug book. 
Randy was back on duty and shoving a mug of hot coffee at me. Oh, come on, Johnny. Give up, will you? Nope. But even if you find her, you've got nothing on her. And from what you've told All right. Me... All right, so I'm stepping. But until I figure out what this cockeyed caper is all about... Well, don't just stand there, Randy. Give me a hand. Me? I don't even know what she looks like. All right. She looks a little like this one, only the eyes are different. Mm. And a bit like this one, only she's smaller. Like this one here a little, only darker hair and much cuter. Cuter. Ha. Did you uh, run a check on that name, Lynn Peters? Oh, uh, like a darn fool, right after I locked you in here last night. Nothing, huh? Nothing. Nothing? Hey. What? Look, here she is. I knew I'd find her. I knew it, Randy. And look, look. Her name is Ruth Balachet. Well, I thought you said her name was Lynn Peters. Did I say it was her right name? Okay, okay. So it's Ruth Balachet, the quick dip. The what? You know her? Sure, the quick dip we called her. Purse snatcher pickpocket years ago. All right, then. But not anymore, Johnny. So don't you make any trouble with her. Ruth's clean these days. She is, huh? Mm. Well, we'll see. And the address? Yeah. 2120 West 94. Charlie, forget your keys. Oh, Johnny Dollar. Mm-hmm. Hi, Lynn, or is it really Ruth? Ruth? Lynn? Aren't you making some mistake? Now, don't say you don't recognize me this time. I've never seen you before in my life. Who are you and what do you want? Are you kidding? I am not. Who is it you wish to see? My cute little seatmate on the plane down from Hartford yesterday. You. Me? And don't try to tell me you're not the one. The one who gave me the name of Lynn Peters, only it's really Ruth Valachet. I'm sorry, mister. I never heard of either of them. Now, if you'll take your foot out of the door. Now, just a minute. What is this? Some kind of a racket. Well, if you don't think I can scream loud enough for that cop in the corner Will to hear me... you listen to me for a minute? No. She'd use that name again. The same one Mrs. Weatherwell had used. Charlie. Charles. So maybe he was the key to all this. The rest of the day, I watched the place, hoping he'd appear. Nothing. Nor the next day. Or the next. Then it hit me. Item three, $1.20 for a call to Les in Hartford. Where you been, Johnny? I, I tried to call you at your apartment half a dozen times. Just answer my question, Les. Uh, Mrs. Weatherwell's beneficiaries? Yes. Only one. Her stepson, son of the man who died, left her a widow. What's his name? And incidentally, the insurance is payable immediately on formal notice of her death. Half a million worth. All right, Les, what's his name? Uh, Charles. Charles Weatherwell. Do you know where I can find him? Well, somewhere in New York, I believe. But, but don't worry, Johnny. Yeah? From what she's told me 15 minutes after word of her death gets out, he'll be pounding on my door demanding the insurance. She hates him. Then why leave him the insurance? Oh, only member of the family still left, that sort of thing. Look, Les. And it doesn't look as though he'll have long to wait. What do you mean? Well, like I say, I tried to call you. No answer. So I called the Weatherwell place. A uh, uh, doctor answered. Oh? Told me that two weeks ago she was healthy as all get out. But now she's about ready to kick off. From what? Well, the doctor and a couple of other specialists can't figure it out. Some strange kind of anemia, maybe. Only it's come on so darn fast that... Well, they, they just don't know. Then maybe Charlie does. What? Thanks, Les. Okay, now, Lynn. No, just a minute. Oh, you again. That's right. What do you want around here, mister? A little information. You with that ridiculous talk about a, a plane from Hartford. Where is he? Charlie Weatherwell. Charlie? Right here. Collar on. Don't, don't shoot him, Charlie. Don't. Don't worry. But here, you keep the gun on him just in case. Sure. See, though? Told you he'd be back. Did you fix a hypo for him? Right here, baby. One shot of this and you'd be out for at least five days. Now pull up his sleeve. Sure. It, it won't kill him, will it? No, it won't kill him. I didn't study chemistry for nothing. Already, then. Here, now. Intramuscular. So the effect will be slow and will last. There. And by the time he comes out of this, you and I'll have the insurance and the ruby and be on the other side of the Atlantic. Now, let's get out of here.
When you're hit from behind, when you don't know if the punk who did it has a gun, it's smart to play possum. The only thing that worried me was that injection in the muscle of my left arm. The minute they left, I sterilized the blade of my pocket knife with a match, made a deep cross cut through the needle mark, and squeezed until my fingers were sore. It must have done the trick. Although I felt giddy for a while, I didn't pass out. Item four, two bucks at a nearby saloon for a slug of brandy. Item five, twenty dollars for some work on the arm by a doctor who stopped asking questions only after I showed him my credentials. Then I drove back to Bronxville. Uh, yes? Who are you? Dr. Harmon Barley, and you, sir? Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, yes, Dollar, I've heard of you. Um, come in. How is she, Doctor? She's still alive? Yes, but in spite of all we're doing for her, she is... Well, maybe you're doing wrong. Beg your pardon? Where is she? Upstairs. I've called in a couple of specialists for consultation. Just tell me this. Is she wearing the necklace with the ruby pendant? An almost orange-colored ruby that was stolen temporarily? Yes, she is, but why? Then come on. Get out of the country with not only the insurance, but the ruby, Charlie said. Charlie? Ruby? Yes, that means he made a substitute for the real one after he stole it from her, before he got the stuff back to her via the girlfriend. Mr. Dollar, just... Which way now? Uh, uh, second door on the right. All right, come on. pinkish sort of mark on her chest, where the so-called ruby in that pendant rested was the only sign. But it was enough to convince the two specialists. They immediately began treatment for one of the most subtle and fiendish poisons known to man. Then, some 36 hours later, after she'd passed the crisis... Yes, Mr. Dollar, that cantankerous old patient of mine, well, I... Patient must... of ours now, Dr. Briley. I stand corrected, Dr. Radford. And uh, that goes for Dr. Wilson, too. Anyhow, she's going to be all right. Good. Now that we have a breather, Mr. Dollar, tell us. Yes? What in the world ever led you to believe that this uh, sudden, almost violent deterioration of the red corpuscles in her blood was, was caused by potassium paradichromate? Doctor, a couple of months ago, in one of our western states, a young student made up some jewelry out of various crystals that he'd put together in the laboratory. It was written up in the press. Oh, yes, yes, I remember that. And so do I. Not to mention it, but uh, there was uh, quite a fear over the fact that uh, some of the crystals that looked so like jewels were, were actually deadly poison. Yes, and that contact with human tissue for any length of time... Was yes, easy. yes, uh, uh, the very symptoms that Mrs. Weatherwell was baffling us with until you... That's came. right. So, when I heard him say that he had the ruby... He? The one who did this? Yes, when he said he had the ruby, and that meant the real one... I figured he must have substituted one of these deadly crystals in the pendant on her necklace. And you were right. But wait, you know the name of this man? I certainly do. Dr. Brayley was right. The cantankerous old biddy's recovery was complete. But I must admit, a little short of miraculous. I went back to my apartment, made a call to Les Walters, got a few hours of badly needed sleep. Then the next morning, joined Les at his office. Oh, yes, Johnny, it took a little uh, finagling, but the item appeared in this morning's Hartford Current. Now, the uh, New York paper's got it, too. Good, good, Les. So the word is out that Mrs. Gurney Dalrymple Weatherwell has died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tomorrow, of course, there'll be a retraction. Of course. Well, where is he, Les? I thought you said that 15 minutes after the news got out, we... Oh, Johnny. He, he has to have time to get here, so... Oh, I'd say that he ought to appear... But, but... Uh, yes, Miss Mandeville? Uh, Mr. Weatherwell is here, Mr. Walters. Oh? <laughs> Send him in. Right on cue, do you suppose? <laughs> Mr. Walters. My name is Charles Weatherwell. I'm beneficiary of my stepmother's insurance, and as I understand it, to be paid to me immediately, and with I... With I... Hmm? Yes, Mr. Weatherwell. Meet, uh, Johnny Dollar. Oh, uh, we've met. Hi, Charlie. What's the matter? Uh, how do you get here? What is this? Some kind of 
prick. Oh, and before I forget it, Mr. Wetherill, there was a call for you a couple of minutes ago. Call? For uh, me? Yes. Your stepmother. Want to return it? Here, you can use this phone. No. No, she's dead. Oh, you saw that erroneous news report. No. It's true. It has to be. Why? Because you poisoned what? them? No. Of course not. You mean yes, don't you? It's a trick. It's a trick. Charlie. But you won't get away with it. Put that gun away. No. I'll kill you, too. Not today, Charlie. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. It's okay. It's, it's all okay, folks. Everything's under control. Just a little argument in here, and... Mr. Dollar has settled it quite satisfactorily. <laughs> Lynn Peters, nay Ruth Valache, had made the mistake of waiting for Charlie outside in a car. So, she'll have her day in court, too. Oh, and the original ruby, the real one, we found sewed into the lining of Charlie's coat. Expense account total? Well, just for kicks, why don't we call it a hundred bucks? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week. I want all of you to be sure and listen. You may be sorry if you miss it. I call it the case of the tip-off matter. So tune in, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If you drive a car, remember this. Almost anywhere in the country where you see the Sinclair sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon on gasoline by using Sinclair Dino. That's because in three out of five cars, Regular price, Sinclair Dino matches the performance of expensive premium gasoline, costing up to four cents more a gallon. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino gasoline. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Carl Frank, Olive Deering, Elspeth Eric, Sam Gray, Casey Allen, Dean Carlson, and Rene Santoni. Music supervision by Ethel Huber. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical supervision by Larry Solo. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.